You wanna know how to feel worthy of love? If you're like me, there is part of you that struggles to feel worthy. You wonder if you're enough. And this is a void that can only be filled by you. So I wanna give you four steps to overcome this feeling of unworthiness. And it involves the fear of owning who you are. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? I am intimately acquainted with this because I had, I'm gonna get personal here, but I had a really, really traumatic childhood. From the age of four to eight, I was violently abused and molested by a teenage boy that was living in our home. He was 15 and I was four, and he was a monster to me. And what happened from that fallout was a deep, deep sense of unworthiness that stayed with me for 40 years, really. And I didn't understand why I was so afraid of showing people who I was. I had suppressed my memories for many years and I just felt completely and utterly worthless. And I felt the only way to receive a sense of worthiness was to give people what they wanted out of me. So if I could read you and I could sense what it is that you wanted and I could deliver that, all of my value was based on the affirmation that I got outside of myself. To really know who you are and being accepted and loved for who you are is a big, big hurdle to overcome. No one can show up for you. You have to do it yourself. So when you recognize that you have a fear of actually being who you are in front of people, and you are able to identify that, that's the first step. Recognizing, I'm not showing who I am because I'm scared that if I do, I'll be rejected. And that's how I felt. I felt like if my family knew who I really was, they would throw me out. I was there. I've overcome that. They know who I am now. So that's step one, recognizing that you have a fear of being who you really are in front of everybody. The second one is, is a trick, is understanding your thoughts. You gotta get into them, right? What are your thoughts about yourself? What do you say to yourself? When things go bad, when you make a mistake, how are you speaking to yourself? Do you, when you make a mistake, say, I'm a an idiot. <laughs> That's what I would say. That was my dialogue in my, in my mind, right? You piece of shit. I could go on and on, it's X-rated, horrible stuff, right? I would eviscerate myself. And these thoughts came into my mind all the time and I had feelings about myself. If I literally, in my 40s, I remember at one point acting out, I did some stuff that I was really, really unhappy with. And when I, when I would think about who I was, I would shudder with disgust. And that became a problem for me. I realized I couldn't continue like this. I had to figure out how to actually love who I was. And it was something that I was not prepared to do at the time, it took me some time. But identifying it and knowing that I was so repulsed by who I was that the thought of me gave me the shudders, <laughs> gave me shivers, made me feel disgusted, was a stepping point in how do I, I could approach this problem of, of lack of worthiness which is common for so many of us, for whatever the reason, it doesn't matter. Once I was able to do that and recognize it, I began to identify the things that I had done in my life that made me feel disgusted with myself. And I began to do a practice called self-compassion. <laughs> I learned this from um, PhD and author Kristen Neff. She has a book called Self-Compassion. And in it, she talks about the importance of forgiving yourself and she gave exercises and little, little simple things that I would do when I started to turn in on myself and I heard my thoughts that I had identified starting to eviscerate. I would hug myself, I would rub my arm and I would say to myself real simply, it's okay, man, it's okay. You made a mistake, you got this. Or, hey, you're having a tough time. It's okay to have a tough time. I couldn't at this point with the, uh, 
with the techniques that she gave, I couldn't actually even say these words to myself because they made me so uncomfortable. And I had to actually picture within my mind my son, who was about three at the time. And I would speak to him as if he was me. And that allowed me the space that I could then offer him compassion, which was really my child within myself. So if you can begin to offer yourself compassion and forgiveness, if you can't do it to yourself, speak to yourself as you would to the person that you love. This is the step I had to do. I can actually picture my own self in my mind now and I can get through helping me. I don't shudder at who I am anymore. And then once you have forgiven all of the things that you feel you need to forgive, once you have offered yourself support for all of the hard things that you've faced in your life, because we all face them, you are then able to look at the wholeness of who you are. And this is the toughest part for me, at least it was, I could accept all the bad that I was. I had a strong belief that I was unworthy. I had a strong belief that I was no good. And so holding on to those stories was easy. Forgiving them was hard. But then the next step was learning to accept where I was good. And having the courage to admit with all confidence and ease that I had some real value and some real skills and some real talent. And when I could hold, not swing between the good and the bad, but hold the whole picture of who I was, my weaknesses and my strengths, then I was like Brene Brown's, my quote, my favorite quote from Brene Brown is, to stand your sacred ground. She says, don't shrink. Don't puff up, stand your sacred ground. And that sacred ground is holding all of who you are and accepting it with openness. And that's brave and that's vulnerable. And that is when you're able to show up and deliver all the worthiness that you have to offer to the world, which we need. We want you to do that. Everybody, everybody has something significant to offer but you can only offer it when you're standing on your sacred ground. You're not diminishing yourself and saying I'm worthless. You're not puffing up and you're saying I'm the best, I'm the man, being toxic. You are just you and let people see you. Four steps, right? Recognizing that you have fear of admitting that you are worthy to be loved. Understanding your thoughts and feelings and emotions that, that swirl within yourself, what they are and what they're saying about who you are. Giving yourself compassion, forgiving yourself for all the things that you've done, all the things that you are. Step three is to offer yourself compassion and forgive yourself for all the things that you're harboring um, negativity for yourself. Step four, final step, is opening yourself to the idea that you are valuable, that you have worth, and holding that along with your weaknesses. Not holding just one or the other, but holding the whole picture of who you are together. Then you know you're worthy because it is our weaknesses that make us lovable and it are, is it our strength, it's our strengths that allow us to deliver the value that we have to the world. And y'all, all of us have strength. All of us have it. Thanks for hanging out with me today. And if you like the channel, subscribe. Check out more videos that I have to offer. Love to hear your comments if you have something to add. Yeah, I would love to know how you feel worth in your life or places that you're struggling to feel valuable. Because these are things that I think are fascinating. We all have ways to overcome. And we all have blocks that we're facing. Comment below. I'll respond to you. Make sure to watch other videos on the channel and check out this video how to face a future without fear, if you like what you're seeing. Here it comes. Watch it. You know you want to. <laughs> Another video about fear? You want to you click on it. Come on, do it.